get started today. Welcome. Welcome. Good to see you guys today. We're going to finish up our chosen series today. We've got, uh, I know this service has been a little, a little different, uh, a little different format. Hey, listen, we were expecting to be out there on the church property. Rain had other ideas. So um, thank you guys who swapped gears and made it happen this morning. I know it was a big deal. Thank you so much. Also, thank you to everybody who worked so hard on Saturday to get that property ready for us to do that. I encourage you to go by there and check it out. It really does look good. So go check it out. Um, We're going to reschedule and we'll do an event on the property very, very soon. Awesome. Well, today uh, we've been in the Chosen series. And today, uh, what the Lord's laid on my heart is that we're chosen. Yes, last week we were, were chosen to go. And this week, what the Lord's laid on my heart is we're chosen to send Chosen to go, and we're chosen to send. That may sound a little chosen to send. Absolutely. Let's turn to Romans chapter t- chapter ten, and uh, while we turn there, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would give us a heart to send. Lord, in the very beginning, you laid on my heart for this to be a sending church. So, Lord, we are a church that wants to send out of the harbor to send people like ships out of the harbor to go and to do your work and to take the good news, to be a church that would prepare people to be able to send people out to expand the kingdom. So, Lord, we love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, give us all a heart for that. We love you, Father. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, today, Romans chapter 10. We're going to start reading there. In verse 8, it says, But what does it say? Talking about the scripture. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. What's that word of faith that they're talking about? Faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Notice how it doesn't say some who call on him. It says all who call on him. And then it says in verse 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the point. The point is this, Leeson. Jesus paid, listen to this, Jesus paid the price for everyone on earth's salvation. Now, everyone won't be saved because it's a matter of accepting or or rejecting. But Jesus made provision for everybody on earth. Jesus made provision for all humanity to have the opportunity to be saved. He paid that price. But here's the thing, salvation is on an individual basis. Salvation is on an individual basis. It is personal to us. It is personal to you. It's a covenant between you and Jesus is what it is. A covenant between you and Jesus or between me and Jesus. I can't accept or submit to Jesus for someone else. If I could, everybody would be saved. But I can't and neither can you. But anyway, salvation is a is a personal thing. I can't do business in this regard. I can't do this business on somebody else's behalf. I just can't. I just can't do it. Um, because it's personal. It's, it's personal. It's personal to you. You can't, and the other, the other flip side of this is, you can't gain salvation off of somebody else's experience. You can't ride somebody else's coattails into heaven. It's personal to you. You can't ride uh, mom and them's coattails into heaven. Just because mom and them were saved doesn't mean that I'm saved. It's personal. It's personal. It's personal, but it's not private. It's personal, but it's not private. What am I saying? Your salvation is a personal thing, but by nature of what we know, it shouldn't be something that we keep a secret. It should be something that we're willing to share and to tell people. If we actually care about people, we'll do that. And that's about the the going and even the flip side of sending. Because if I value that and I can't go myself, then maybe I need to be one who prepares and sends. We need to be a church that does both. 
There's a lot of churches that are one or the other. A lot of people even that are one or the other. Either they go, 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 but they never send. Or they, they send, 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 but they never themselves go. I believe we are to be a church. I have a vision for a church that does both, that we go into all the world. You know the Great Commission is go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? There's more to it than that. But that word go is an ongoing thing. It's not a, hey, when you make a special trip into Africa, preach the gospel. What it is is as you go into the world every day on a daily basis, preach the gospel. As you, as you go about your daily business, proclaim the goodness of God. That's what, that's what it's about. That's the commission. But there are people that we need to prepare and we need to, we need to send. And this thing is personal but not private. Here's the thing. If I can experience what God has done for me, if I can experience the forgiveness that he's given me, uh, the things that he's forgiven me from, uh, the grace that he's poured out on my life, and not feel like I either need to go or to send, there's something wrong. There's something wrong in my heart if I can receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior and not feel compelled to let somebody else know the good news. There's something, there's something wrong in my heart. I'm either deceived or I'm foolish. I'm either deceived or I'm foolish. I might be just cold-hearted and need my spirit renewed. But when you come to a revelation of what you've been forgiven for and you can't go, then it should at least make you want to send, make you want to send people. Um, the word, the word, <laughs> the word apostolic literally means, you know, we, we talk about there's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The word apostolic, when it's used in the Old, Old Testament, it, it actually is a sending word. It's a word that literally means to send, out, to send out like a ship out of a harbor. Apostolic is to send. The whole one of the whole five of the, of the fivefold ministry is about sending. It's about sending people to do the work. That's why um, when they laid hands on Paul and Barnabas, what did they do? They sent them out. They sent them to do this. They sent them to do that. And when churches in the, Old, in the New Testament couldn't go, and they heard about people that needed help in Jerusalem. They couldn't go. They actually gave and took somebody and sent them with the gift. It's about sending. It's not just about physically putting yourself there, although that is extremely important. It's about both. It's about being a people who will send. You know, the Bible says this. Many are called and few are chosen. That's been a common theme in this whole chosen thing. Many are called, few are chosen. We've been chosen to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And we've been chosen to help propagate that by sending people to the ends of the earth. But we've also been chosen to help send people to Jerusalem, Judea, and the uttermost part of the earth. Your Jerusalem is where you live. It's right there at home. It's right here in our neighborhood. We've been chosen to send people out here locally and show the love of Christ. We're not just a missions church that sends people to Honduras or Nicaragua, but we send a lot of people and resources to Honduras and Nicaragua. We're called to send people to our Jerusalem, to Jacksonville. We're called to send people over here and over there and all over Jacksonville. There's a huge mission field here as well as there. So what do we do? Do we do this or that? The answer is yes. Do we send people over here or do we send people over there? Yes. It's not an either or proposition. And it feels like sometimes to me when I talk to a lot of people that they have the idea that it's an either or thing. But it's a both and. It's a both and thing. We've been chosen to send. Verse 14. Let me show you what I'm talking about. How will they call on him? This is just a continuation of that passage. How will they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they've never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they're sent? Unless they're sent. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news? 
but they've not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Listen, we have been chosen as believers and as this house, we recognize we've been chosen to participate in the biggest rescue mission in history. We've been chosen to participate in the biggest effort to pull people out of a fire in history in a very literal sense. We've been chosen to be a people who, if we can't go, then we can resource. If we can't go and we have people who can go, then we can help prepare them and send them. We're called to be a people who have not just an inward vision, but an outward vision. So what is it? Should we, should we be, <laughs> you'll have churches that'll be, well, this church is evangelistic in nature, and this church is discipleship-oriented in nature. Should, are they right or are they right? Should we, should we be discipleship-oriented in nature and prepare people, or should we be a, a church that is outward-focused and, and evangelistic all the time? The answer is yes, we should be both of those things. It's not impossible. It's totally possible. Why? Because when we get people, when people get saved and they come into God's house, we set them in a place and help raise them up and teach them and prepare them and get them ready. And then we can take those same people that we prepared and helped and got ready and taught and loved on and showed compassion to and, 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 and built relationship with. And we can take them and we can send them into the outward focus. It's a both and. It's not an either or. We're called to go and we're called to send. Listen, we're, we're a church who loves Jesus and loves people. And there are people out there who need him just like there are people in here who need him. We need to be a church who goes. So we can participate in two ways as a church. We can go or we can send. You can even do that as an individual. Go or send. I'm going to give you a little bit of vision about Connect. At Connect, we're a church that's called to do several things. Number one, we're called to plant churches. That's been in my heart from day one. It's, it's our heart's desire to plant churches. We have people that are here right now that are preparing to go and looking at timing, looking at what to go and plant a church. But you might need them here. What, what are you going to do if those important people leave, Pastor Kelly? I guess one of you will have to step up and take their place. Just saying. We're a, per, we're a church body who at its heart is a, church, is a church that wants to plant churches. We want to raise up other people, send them out. So one of our things to do is to, is to send people out. As a church, we're also called, if we're going to plant churches, we have to be a church that's prepared to prepare people, prepared to raise people up, prepared to, to release people. See, part of sending is you have to be willing to release. You have to be willing to raise people up and let them go into what they're called to do. What does it, what does it matter if you have a purpose if you won't be released into the purpose? What does it matter <laughs> in some places if people find out what their calling is if they're never released into it, if they're never prepared for it, if they're never sent with it? What does it matter? It's not much value if it's not developed and sent. You see what I'm saying? It's important. It's very important. People's purpose matters. Why do you think Jesus gave it to them? People's purpose matters. We have to be a church that raises up and sends. You know, we also, as a church, are a church that, uh, that, that sends by resourcing. Did you know you can send by resourcing? We talked about a church that likes to, you know, that has a heart to plant churches. One of the ways that you guys do that is through your giving. Here's how you do that. A part of every dollar that you give goes to ART, the Association of Related Churches. And you know what that whole organization is about? Planting churches. That's what it's about, planting churches. So part of every dollar that you give to Connect Church, the, the resources that we have goes to help plant churches. That's what we do. That's one of those things. Um, I remind you the seed faith offering we took up a while back. Do y'all remember that? Jesus hadn't forgot it, neither have I. We took up that $10,000 offering and sowed it into the church in Honduras, every dime that came in that day. That was an, that, 
That's part of resourcing. Do you, I, I wish I could tell you all that that has done in Honduras. It's an amazing thing. You see, the kingdom of God doesn't have borders. The kingdom of God doesn't have borders. It's all over. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. He's king over all of it. So the other thing we're called we're going to do as a church is we're going to, we're going to have, as far as uh, Connect Church, we're going to have different locations of different campuses and different campus pastors and different worship leaders in those places and different, uh, different youth pastors, different children's pastors, additional. Uh, we're going to need sound people. James, God bless you. We're going to need more sound people. James needs help, y'all. Anyway, he's, he needs help. He's such a faithful guy. But James, you're going to have to prepare people to run sound at all those other campuses, James. You're going to have to do that. And then when you get them where they do a fantastic job right here in this house, you're going to have to let them go to go do it. But that's not fair. I, I need to. That's part of it. You release and send. That's part of it. James is prepared to do that. I know he is. James doesn't get much recognition. He hides back there behind that soundboard, but he's one of the most faithful people at Connect Church. He's an awesome guy. So, you know, we're called to start other campuses, other church. We're called to send missionaries in our future. We got mission trips that are coming up very soon. Second week in October, be going to Honduras. I think Pastor Ted's leading that trip, aren't you, Pastor Ted? You want to go to Honduras, the church that we sow into and love and have a relationship with? Get with Pastor Ted, second week in October. That's as a church. Well, as individuals, we can do it like this. There's two ways to do it. We have to go and we have to send as individuals. Obviously, we can physically go on a mission trip. We can physically go into our world. We can go into our everyday life and share the gospel as we get opportunity. That's part of our going. But as individuals, we can also send. We have an opportunity today to prepare to send people. Y'all know we have the Grow Fund offering today that we've been talking about for a long time. Y'all notice we didn't take up an offering earlier in the service. Do you see that? Some of y'all thought, Whew, man, he forgot. We got away with it. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I did that on purpose. I did that on purpose. Um, we're going to do that today. We're going to take up that special Grow Fund offering. We don't push. We're not a real money-centered push church, but we are a church that's preparing to sin. That takes resources. And uh, today, everything that comes in an offering, the Lord's laid on, everything that comes in the offering is going to go towards Grow Fund to prepare to build that facility so we can raise people up and send them. That's what it's about. One of the ways that you can do as an individual, you can prepare a place. We can help prepare a place. We need to be able to prepare a place. This is awesome, and we're super grateful for the opportunity. Church is people. It's not buildings, but buildings are tools. Okay, this is not a permanent solution. The Glen, you know, the Glen County. Help, oh, Jesus, I'm Duval. Duval County has been very gracious to us to let us use this, but this is temporary. We need a place for this church to be able to be and to prepare and to send out of. To get people healed, to get them prepared, to get them ready to be sent. Listen, there's, this is a today is a, prang, a, a practical and tangible, a practical and tangible opportunity. It does take finances to propagate the gospel. You know what? It does now, and it always has. Did you know that? It always has. You know that Jesus had a treasurer that went with him everywhere he went. That guy was a thief and didn't work out good for him, but he actually did have a treasurer that went with him, and they. They had resources to help people, to, to, to send people, to feed. They, they had resources. But it took resources to do what they were doing. You know how God provides for what he wants to do? He does it through his people. He can do it a lot of other ways, but primarily does it through his people. We've had a lot of people ask, okay, well, well what, what is it going to take? Well, since the first of the year, you know, there's already been $22,000 that's come in without any kind of special offering that we just put back through God's, the faithfulness of God's people out of 150000 bucks. We haven't even taken up an offering, and there's, that's, that's absolutely amazing to me. But we do have a chance to do that today. So there's a couple of things that we're going to ask you to do. There's a couple of things we're going to ask you to do, and then we're going to go eat barbecue. 
That's, see, Jesus also, y'all know that Jesus is, y'all know that the whole Old Testament form of worship revolved around a barbecue? Go look at it. It was a kosher barbecue, but it was a barbecue. It was like Kansas City, more like Texas, Kansas City, but it was. So Jesus loves barbecue, but Jesus also loves faithfulness of people. He loves the people that will do what he's called them to do. 